Welcome to uh, yet another edition of uh, Red Card Weekly, a very special Balotelli Seedorf edition of Red Card Weekly. Here we mostly speak about uh, Serie A, sometimes international, sometimes European. And yes, well, we're not professionals, nor do we pretend to be. But after this week, maybe we're kind of a bit professional. Uh, you know what, this is a very good point. Guys, we wanted to take the time today to, um, to take most of this episode to talk about this whole Milan situation, the Seedorf. We're going to look at some clips uh, what happened in the last 24 hours with Balotelli with Seedorf. But before I do start, uh, I would like to give us a common nickname, Steve, if that's okay with you. Here at Mercury Weekly, we like to think, especially on this episode, Se de parlate ancora di Balotellate, Steve e io le prenderemo a bastonate. Okay guys, we're, we're really fed up. And we're going to take the time today to really talk about all this. Because look, okay, if we even go to the results, guys, this week, they're, they're almost secondary. Uh, the big game was uh, Milan and, uh, and Roma. Milan, Roma, we, we all know, know that. Uh, Lazio, uh, Lazio winning today, Torino winning today. Torino winning, Inter Napoli doing 0-0. And you know what, it's putting us back to 10 spots. Verona winning tournament. as well, Luca Toni scoring, getting yeah. subbed off. and. Oh, but, but uh, hold on a second. When Luca Toni gets subbed off and, and, and he's getting mad at the, the, the coach, uh, dimostre carattere. But when Balotelli does it, well, huh, look at look at that troublemaker. You know what, guys? Why don't we just we're just gonna go directly to this interview? Show them the interview. We're show gonna show them. you the interview, guys. We're gonna give you a bit of show. This is garbage. garbage. Take garbage. a look. Take a look. Garbage. So, Steve, we just took a look at the uh, the interview uh, to Balotelli. With uh, Boban Panucci. Um, Panucci. Panucci. Panucci, a couple of years ago, was on Dancing with the Stars, Italian version. And he sucked at that too. So I'm going to do a critic on Panucci. Tu non puoi ballare, Panucci. Non sai ballare. Io, 280 libbre di carne, ballo più meglio di te. Grazie. That's, that's for you, Christian Panucci. Guys, in the just of this interview, I'm sure you've heard uh, uh, the translation. Basically, uh, the guy that was interviewing them at the beginning, you can see that he was just trying to get like a couple of questions in, but you could see that he was very nervous, very agitated, and he was he was answering the question, but very straight to the point. Yes, and the first blame that we're going to give is we're going to give it to Milan. We're going to give it to Milan because they didn't show up for the game. No. They didn't get the result. The management, you guys want to hire someone, the first person you're going to hire is you're going to hire a PR agent. Okay, because there's no reason to throw a 20-year-old kid who already has a lot of extracurricular activities going on in his life in front of savage journalists who are looking for a reaction from Mario Balotelli. And especially the first, when he went to the journalists in studio, the first thing that came out of that guy's mouth was, here's my criticism for you and here's what I think you should do better. Now, if you're telling me that you weren't looking for a reaction, and then Boban. Boban, you know what? I'll give you much is that you can say what you because you've given a lot to, to Zoro has given a lot to Milan, but when you're talking to a guy, what happened to last week when we won five games in a row and we're like, okay, you know what, it's going a bit better, and all of a sudden But we understand what happened the five games in a row. We understand that they played a weaker opponent, their results that they had to get. To Friday we play a Roma team which is extraordinary. Oh, we extraordinary. And I repeat again, if they didn't go through a series of draws, this this Campionato race will be much, much, Definitely. much more, much more entertaining. I think, I think none of us Milanistas, true Milanistas, are surprised by the result. I think we're more surprised from the, that the, the players didn't show up. And I know a lot of you guys out there think differently. But when Balotelli is trying to hold the ball and he's trying to like, you know, on that action that, that will, you've seen on the, on the interview where they showed Tarat, why is he standing there? Like, you know, give some support to your player. Obviously, people are going to get frustrated. Mario was saying that nobody likes it when they're losing. Everybody's nervous, but he said, 
after you get into a sport at all, it's forgotten. Exactly. You know? And that's another thing. There are things like Seedorf takes care of them behind closed doors, that critic has given behind closed doors, not in front of everybody, not in front of the camera to belittle the person. I'm pretty sure he's criticized a lot because Balotelli in that game was A, almost non-existent, yeah. whether you want to say service or no service. We're looking at the reaction right now from two. him when he got subbed out. Two, very nervous and could have got a card, he would have risked, risked him for the derby. Definitely. Okay. And three, when a player is on the field and on the pitch with that kind of nervous attitude, something bad is, is going to happen. And so you know, the good? substitution was just, yes, he should not react like that. And I hate when the players react like that because it shows that they're immature and that they're not playing for the shirt, they're playing for themselves. But on this, on this, on this note, uh, Steve, I want to show you guys exactly, there was a clip here we're going to show you from uh, Sky Sport. Where all of a sudden, well, uh, before you go to that clip, we're gonna deal with the Boban thing now. No. Boban, he go Boban Say is no someone again. who represents the shirt because he's played for Milan. Yeah, yeah. And I understand this job as a journalist. You need to get a reaction. You need to, get, but there has to be some common sense the way you go about like it. The way His said. first question was, "Do you think you're a forty class? What do you want that guy to? Re what do you already? He's nervous." Yeah. What do you want him to? You know that what he's gonna he, he's gonna reply is gonna be something that's something that is gonna cause so much controversy, and that's what Sky were looking for. That's why I'm angry. They were looking for a reaction now, from Balotelli. Understandably, let's. I'm looking at it the other flip side of the coin. Is that this? Yes, Balotelli about you know four or five months ago was quoted to say. I don't remember that interview saying you know after Messi and Ronaldo there's me. I could understand his frustration getting attacked like that, but. Mario, you need to you need to be able to handle, like you know, like right now we're looking at a Seedorf interview. We're, we're going to get into a bit later. Is that you, you should handle these these unfortunately these idiots, idiots like guys like Panucci and Boban attacking you? Do it with a smile. And I know it's a lot harder said than done, Steve. I really do. Yes, because it's not consistent. It doesn't happen with every player. We when Mario Balotelli was in England, we. Bash the English media. Yeah. We said they were mercenaries. We were fall they were following him around. They were seeing which car he was driving, the camouflage one, how much money he had, blah 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 blah. Now it's time that we give it to Sky. Because Sky, what they did was just continuously attack this guy. Attack him in the, it doesn't make sense. You're you're you you're what you're doing is you're putting him out there, uh like as if it's his fault that he lost yeah. the, that we lost the game. On that note, Sky, uh, are you were you good at math when you were in high school? Uh, algebra, diagrams, and uh, no. have you ever seen a, a a player get dissected with diagrams? And uh, have you ever seen that, Steve? I've never seen that. Too. Guys, you know what? We're gonna show you a very small clip of what Sky Sport actually came out with after. And now you're gonna try to understand when a guy like Balotelli has to see stuff like this. Have a look, guys. So Steve, we just took a look at Sky Sport with these diagrams, these columns. Oh, look at the goals that he hasn't scored with the big teams. That was adjusted to send you con le, le squadre piccole, he can score. But have you ever seen a diagram on Carlos Tevez? How come he doesn't score in the, Euro, the Europa League or anywhere in Europe? Have you ever see, seen the diagram of Luca Toni against which teams does he score? Why are we going? And this, I'm sorry, Steve. A guy like Balotelli, especially for the Azzurri, we can't put him in the, because a guy like this with this kind of pressure in his head, maybe won't be able to perform. You guys want him to stay home? Tell him to stay home. We're gonna go with what? Gilardino? Nevertheless, there I understand the the, the critique about the uh, the diagrams and so on. He didn't score with the big teams. And yes, that's pretty much it. The thing is, it's it's probably just. It's probably just because against the big teams with Roma, with Inter, with uh, Juventus, there's, different tactics, there's different tactics. They understand that it's him the focal point. They're gonna put pressure on. He does have to start. Did you just mention Juventus? Because you know Mario Balotelli hasn't played against Juventus in the last uh, two years. But you know this guy won't tell you that. But anyway, and cool. he might not even have scored in those games. Yeah. The thing is that it's something that's non-consistent. It doesn't happen with every player. How come they don't do a graphic on uh, Luca Toni and uh, when he scored his goals 
or uh, how come they uh, don't do a graphic on uh, someone else or back in the day if uh, Baggio wasn't scoring there was no graphic there maybe there wasn't technology but they could have done it on a piece of paper but it wasn't done it's done to this 23 year old 23 years old that's what I think everybody's forgetting 23 years old, presents in the national, something that Italy as a country should cherish and try to protect. Yeah. That's why Milan took him back to Italy and that's why he wanted to come back to Italy, is to be protected from the media who was trying to expose him for all the negative things. And now, and now we're, we're, we're back at problem being worse than the English media, guys. It's just that what we're trying to say is that Balotelli is no saint, 100%, okay? He deserves sometimes some criticism, but when you interview him after a game like that, right, you're just trying to get some sort of reaction, and you got it. Now, Balotelli might have been wrong to react that way, but you saw the emotion. 100%. You saw the emotion. What he said it in English, I'll translate. Oh yeah, sure. When Milan wins, Mario's number one. But when Milan loses, hey, it's all Mario's fault. It wasn't just Mario's fault because you know what? The way the team was playing, I could understand his frustration. Even though he was wrong to show that frustration onto the pitch, but let's remember, guys, we were all 23 years old at one point. Everybody deals with their own thing. The guy's oh, a brand new father. Oh, oh, oh. We were 23 years old. We didn't have that kind of money. That's true. That's true. But uh, guys, on this note, it's like we've re we've said it in the past, and we're gonna say it again. Mario, we love you. With your bad side and your good side, leave the kid alone. I understand that he's the most sought after Italian player. I know that he's of a different color. I can get that, that it's not used to it. But leave the kid alone. He's our hope. And if you guys keep on doing this to him, it's the hypocrisy of the media that basically what they're trying to, uh, to, get a, to get a grasp on is that right now during the season, that's what they're looking for. Bring up these uh, negative, uh, negative things of Balo. Uh, What's going to happen when the June swings around and he's wearing the Azzurri shirt? Magically, all these things, if they do come up, they're going to be hidden or they're not going to be talked about. Do you believe any of that, before we get into the Seagull conversation, do you believe any of these uh, rumors saying that Prandelli might take this as like a, uh, the, the one drop that, uh, uh, the one thing that he's going to do and not bring him to Italy because no. of this whole thing? I, no. I think it would be a mistake, but no. if you got to go by his code of ethics. No, because Prandelli will, will nurture him, which should have been done before he got there. Which I do, I tap my hat, I tip my hat to Mario Balotelli because he just didn't an answer the typical sports cliche where uh, when you lose, you say, you know what, uh, the other team was better. Uh, we could have done more. We could have done more. Uh, we, we fought for 90 minutes. Uh, we, uh, we had a couple of chances. And I like the kind of in the post match interview, what yeah. you're referring to. Honestly. He did not go through the, the typical sports cliche. Whoever was criticizing, he answered him back. That's what you got. You got a fantastic interview, which unfortunately overshadowed Roma's performance. Because now no one's talking about the Pjanic goal, no one's talking about the, the Roma victory. They're all talking about this, which is the negative side of soccer, which Serie A still does not grasp that they need to get this out of the game yeah. so that they can focus on Pjanic's goal instead of Mario Balotelli. And honestly, we would like as Milanistas to tip our hat off to uh, Pjanic. What a fantastic goal made the same move three times in a row and our defense looked like the defense is terrible the defense was terrible you know and it's it's it, fantastic i love the way i love to look at uh, roma the way they play and i really hope they do good uh, next year roma is another team that you know we, we would like to support uh, are we going to show the the seedorf interview private with uh, with the sky well we, we do have it on the background here let's get into the seedorf conversation all of a sudden today uh sunday uh, april 27th Sky Sports, supposedly Steve, had an exclusive interview with Sidor at his home and Milan knew nothing about it. Man. Now you're going to stop there and tell us that Clarence Sidorf, a gentleman, il professore, to say, made an interview to Sky Sports after all this fiasco that happened with Balotelli. You're telling me that Milan had no idea that he was giving an interview to, 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 to Sky Sports? And you know what, if you guys take a look at this interview, I know we just have it in our background uh, after this clip here. He didn't say anything out of the way right here. If you guys want to take a look at it, uh, sport.sky.it, interviste con Clarence Sidor, and always like this guy, smiling and saying, I'm not here to take Galliani's spot, I'm here to coach Milan, 
I have a two and a half year, and he, go, he keeps on saying, whatever these rumors are is what you guys are writing. I just want here to make the best, and he said it. He goes, Balotelli, he goes, I hate the fact that they don't speak about how he's grown some some parts in the last couple of months. They only, they only, they only look at the no, negative. No, they forgot about that. They that forgot, that didn't yeah. count. It counted only when he does something wrong, which that is the media. It's always like that. It's whatever negative sells papers, gets you clicks, so on and so forth. We're going to turn to the Milan side because I have a bone to pick with the Milan Associata. The fans, we re require an explanation of what's going on. Yeah. That's As true. we were talking before, Seedorf, you're going to back him or you're not going to back him? The, the silence is killing us. Just tell us, like, we look, we know guys like Azzurro Milan is going to see Seedorf, Seedorf is bad, this and that, but you know what? Sorry, Azzurro Milan. Even if Inzaghi was in that game, I don't see what difference he could have made. Seedorf right now is not the problem. Just the way Allegri was part of the problem before, but not completely. You could not expect a guy like Seedorf to turn things around within, you know, three to four months, not having a full transfer window, not buying into the players. That's why I believe if we gave that idiot of Allegri over two years to prove himself, why should we get rid of Seedorf right now? And, and if you guys have no plan of keeping Seedorf, why sign him out of nowhere for two and a half years? Unless, Steve, like you're saying, something's going on behind the scenes and nobody's telling us exactly what's happening. If Seedorf is, is just taking the bull by the horns and saying, I'm going to do it my way, and Galliani doesn't like that, Barbara doesn't like, Barbara came out this week and is like, oh, the uh, La Torre is not my responsibility, I'm not going to comment on that. Is Seedorf she, a problem? She made negative comments as well towards La Società. In the, in the article that I read, the, the, little, uh, the little jab at Galliani saying that Roma it, it con was constructed properly, which is 100% true. But well, they, they had money. Excuse me, they had money, right? They had, they had little money, not, that, not as much as we used to have. But the thing is, is that why do you need, again, that negative press? Is it taken out of context? That I don't know. That could be. It was but that's concerns. something that they have to, instead of being a media circus, yeah. get things under control. Whoever the PR guy is, and who, please, I, I would love to meet this person to say, what, uh, what PR are you doing? It's PR minus. It's negative PR. Everything is bad. Everything that comes out is bad. Intel, last year, they were having trouble with, uh, with uh, hiring Stramaccioni and dealing with the Stramaccioni uh, hiring and firing and so on and forth. And it didn't even get to that bad. Look, let's look at it this way. Stramaccioni and Mazzari, at the same point in the year last week, were at the exact same point result. Why is nobody talking about that? Because Milan has to be the focal of any kind of media, and we get it, you know, we're not exactly, we're far from where we're supposed to be, especially in Europe and this and that, but we understand, just like we're Manchester good. United fans, that it goes like this, okay? We've accepted that. But when you don't come out and say, where do you stand, La Sociedad, La Sociedad why hiring a Seedorf? From what we're talking about, uh, uh, firing him after having five wins in a row, we lost one on. Yeah. Seedorf, not have more of you. Not have more of you. In the Europa League, everybody failed to mention that uh, Juve lost 2 1 against Benfica. Oh, yeah, well, uh, but that's like, you know what, uh, it's okay, but uh, this. Uh, no, nobody, no. nobody, nobody, there was there any graphs about uh, Juventus no, and Benfica? No graphs about that. The only thing is, is that's what they said. It has to be consistent with everybody. And it's unfortunate it's not. Milan is a very easy target. Controversial owner. Obviously. Constant rumors of takeover from Asia. Yeah. Constant media negativity from, uh, when it comes to uh, Galliani, Barbara, Sidor, Okay, Paolo so Dali. explain me this. Why did two years ago when Ibrahimovic, looking at a, at a journalist, che cazzo guardi? No, everybody was laughing. Ha, 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 Ibra, Ibra, Ibra. But if Malo Telly would have done that, pardon me. You know, it would be such a big fiasco. But anyways, I'm just... I'm just fed up of everybody jumping to conclusions about this team. We as Shumilanistas have accepted the fact that this is where we are right now. If we need to suffer next year with no Europa, no, no, we're not, uh, we're not a 10th place team. No, we've seen that with the results. We've we accepted the, the fact that we're not at the levels of. We're not at the levels of Juve, Roma, Napoli. Accento per cento. But we, we creep up to the, the teams like uh, Fiorentina. Unfortunately, they didn't have a full team, so we can't evaluate if we're at their level. But. We'll see you next week again in the Derby, which the Derby 
in Derby. Big party at Parkway. Guys, come on over. We're going to put up the poster on Twitter on uh, the service road in Parkway. I like to have not just Interistas, Milanistas, anybody. Any soccer fans, you know what? It would just be great to have like, you know, 30, 40 guys, just the passion for soccer. Simultaneously, there will be other parties held in New York. Yeah, we also got, held uh, in Toronto. We got the New York Fan Club of Philly and Toronto are gonna have a party as well. Yeah. Uh, so we would really like to see you guys out there and see if we could get a, a win. But before we leave you, uh, not all journalists, Steve, are on the page that Balotelli is a problem and try to attack him. What we're gonna do, guys, we're gonna leave you off, and we're really sorry for our English only speaking um, fans. We're gonna leave you off with this nice little video that Sky made of all of all companies with our beloved Fabio Caressa, uh, one of the great commentators in Italian soccer. He did a little montage on Balotelli, and you'll see that in just what he says that Balotelli is the only one that can write his own future in the book of his life. Guys, we'll see you next week for uh, Il Derby, Cevediano. And, and Boban, we're at point one that doesn't agree with you. 99.9% are on our side of what happened with Mario. No! Punto uno, siamo qui. Guys, thank you. Ciao.